Bridges. They're everywhere, and yet we rarely think about them. But behind every bridge is a story, a challenge overcome, and an incredible bit of engineering. So today, we're taking a journey through time and structure to discover how different types of bridges came to be and how they actually work. Let's begin where it all started. Thousands of years ago, ancient people used fallen trees or bundled ropes to cross rivers. These were the first beam bridges, the simplest kind, a horizontal slab supported at both ends. But even today, beam bridges are everywhere. Overpasses, pedestrian walkways, short road crossings. They work by resisting bending. The top of the beam gets compressed and the bottom stretches under tension. Materials like steel and pre-stressed concrete help resist those forces efficiently. Simple, yes, but incredibly effective. Next came a beautiful idea from ancient Mesopotamia and perfected by the Romans, the arch bridge. Take a curved structure, load it from above, and the force is redirected outward into the abutments. That's the key. Instead of bending like a beam, arch bridges push. They rely on compression, making them perfect for stone, brick, or unreinforced concrete. Some Roman arch bridges are still standing after 2,000 years. That's not just impressive. It's a testament to the power of engineering principles that never go out of style. Then came the industrial era. Trains needed long, strong spans fast. Enter the truss bridge. It might look like scaffolding, but it's all about the triangle, the most stable shape in engineering. Each member in a truss handles pure tension or compression. That means less bending, less material, and a lot more efficiency. From timber railroad bridges to steel freight crossings, truss bridges became the workhorses of 19th century infrastructure, and they're still used today. Now, let's span something big, really big, like an ocean bay or a deep canyon. This is where the suspension bridge shines. Imagine cables draped over towers, anchored into the earth. The roadway hangs from those cables like a hammock. The main cables are in tension. The towers are in compression. Together, they hold the entire span. Think, the Golden Gate Bridge. Elegant, flexible, and capable of crossing miles. But what if you want a similar effect without the sweeping cables? That's where the cable stayed bridge comes in. Instead of draping the cables, we connect them directly from the deck to the towers. Straight lines, like a fan or harp. It's clean, it's efficient, and structurally, it's simpler than a suspension bridge. Cable stayed bridges are everywhere now, especially for medium to long spans. Next, we meet the cantilever bridge. Picture two arms reaching out from either side of a gap and meeting in the middle. Each arm is anchored at one end and the forces balance through internal tension and compression. It's perfect when you can't build a support in the middle, like over a busy river or a deep gorge. The fourth bridge in Scotland is a world-famous example of cantilever engineering, bold and timeless. Then there's the Tide Arch Bridge or Bowstring Bridge. Think of an arch but instead of pushing its force into the ground, it pulls that force across a tie, usually the bridge deck. This way, it keeps the load internal and avoids pushing outwards on the foundations. It's ideal when you want the elegance of an arch, but the soil beneath isn't up for the challenge. And finally, we have the movable bridges. These are bridges that adapt to ships, tides, and traffic. Some tilt upward like drawbridges, others lift straight up. Some rotate on a central axis. We call them mascule, lift, and swing bridges. You'll often see them in port cities, canals, or rivers with lots of boat traffic. Movable bridges aren't just structures, they're machines. An incredible fusion of civil and mechanical engineering. So what have we learned? That every bridge, from the most basic beam to the most complex suspension is a response to a problem, a challenge, 
a unique set of forces that must be balanced. Bridges are more than just steel and concrete. They are logic, elegance, and history, all held together in perfect equilibrium. Next time you cross one, stop for a moment. Ask yourself, where's the tension? Where's the compression? How is this miracle of motionless motion really working? And if that excites you, you're already thinking like an engineer. Subscribe to Uncivil Structures, and let's keep exploring how the modern world stands tall.